Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. We're here today to talk a little bit about the CMA Lever Group. Uh, CMA was a, an Italian company that was uh, formed in 1969, and this particular group is almost ubiquitous on uh, lever espresso machines that have been manufactured in what we would consider the, the modern period. Uh, and you can see it's a very stalwart and it's very simple. The characteristics that when you see a, a, a picture of an espresso machine and, and uh, right away you say, this CMA, the, the shape of this grip, but grips can change. The, sh the shape of the, the lever itself with the sculpted appearance, but that can change. The, this top cap is very distinctive. This is cast aluminum. Uh, some of them were chromed, and of course you could give it any surface uh, appearance that you wanted to. The new caps are ABS plastic. This is the brand new part. And so you can see it's exactly the same form, but modern times. The uh, group itself is uh, very simple, very interesting in a way is that it has the, the ball bearing, uh, roller bearings here. Uh, nice big spring, three seal piston. And one of the distinctive features of this uh, uh, group is the use of a, a cylinder sleeve or liner. Uh, this is a, a brass piece and it's, if you were going to consider how, how you would manufacture uh, a piece like this, that you would, of course, you know, make this in a foundry and you would cast this, but there's a lot of machining that's very difficult to do and expensive to do as well if you're going to get inside and you're going to do some extreme machining. So this is pretty much solved by, you could, if you just picture this and you look at this piece on a lathe, uh, you can see how this would just be cut just so on this lathe and milled on the inside and polished. Th this is the surface that the, the piston seals slide on in the cylinder. This is what makes the seal right in here. So if there's wear, if there's damage, corrosion, this is the part that you replace. You replace this, it's about a 65 euro part, rather than the 400 euro entire group. So. They're very good thinking on their part in this design. Now the way the, the, the group works is that, let's just look at water flow here, is that this particular machine, this is off of an Astoria, and this has a simple siphon pickup tube or dipper tube as we sometimes call it. The water is, is forced under pressure from the boiler through this tube. It enters a small hole here and goes downward. And then this valve comes into play. At the bottom here, there's a hole under, and there's a Teflon seat, and this ball forms the stopper for the valve. Now, it's controlled, the flow rate, the allowable flow is controlled by a very simple screw-down valve. Hold it still. Huh? Oh, hold it still. Which part? The valve. Ah, the valve. Okay, has a couple of little rings on it, and it screws down through this top housing and pushes, holds the ball, and restricts the movement of the ball. The looser you have the ball, the faster the flow of water into the group, the more freely it flows. And the ball then acts as a, a, a backflow restrictor that, when, if pressure should push backwards, the ball snaps down against the Teflon and shuts off the water flow from the group. Now, that's the control mechanism for the flow in the group. Now, I like how this little feature, this is where the water enters the cylinder itself. It enters into the group. Now, I hope you can see that, that it goes through from the top and comes out the bottom, right there. So this maximizes the the, the, the area of which the hot water is going to be in contact with the, the heavy brass of this group. 
just goes right down through there and comes out in the bottom. This hole down at the bottom corresponds to this channel around the liner. And this channel has one, two, three, four, six holes around it. So instead of the water entering above the coffee from one point, one direction, it enters all around. There's many machines that, that use sleeves. Uh, and this particular one uh, is, uh, has stood the test of time. And this inserts, you see here's a seal here. An O-ring seal goes in this groove here and prevents the, the water from coming out the top. There's another seal. An O-ring goes in this and seals the bottom of the sleeve. So when the sleeve is inserted from above, this forms not only the, the lip to, to attach the dispersion screen, but it also forms the channel that holds the portafilter gasket. Uh, if you were to uh, have a machine that you were rebuilding, the way that this comes out, you take the group off of the machine, you put a block over here so you don't, uh, a wood block or a, a hard plastic, so you don't distort the, that edge, and you just tap it out with a mallet, and it, it will slowly tap out until you just pull it out of the other end. And so <coughs> that um, is basically the simplicity uh, of this of this group, very heavy metal here, uh, simple uh, flow control valve, uh, three seals, this just drops right in, hooks on with screws, this maintains the tightness of the sleeve, very simple design features, and I look forward to putting this together and pulling a few shots with my CMA group.